<clears throat> Hello, everybody. This is Catholic Dad, episode number 257. Uh, stop complaining. Uh, so uh, I'm Catholic Dad, uh, father of nine children, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about a couple people in my lifetime. Um, number one is Angelo uh, Vincenzo. He's, uh, he was my grandpa. He was an Italian. Uh, his parents were Italian immigrants. He was, uh, he, raised, he was born and raised in Little Italy in New York City. He raised his family in Washington Heights, or uh, Spanish Harlem, in New York City in the projects, and eventually escaped to the North Bronx. Uh, but uh, Angelo, at the age of 18, was drafted into the United States Army. On June uh, 6, 1944, he was uh, storming some beaches in France called Normandy, Utah Beach. And eventually he settled in, you know, he, he marched through France into Germany, and he, they marched all the way to the Elbe River. Uh, where they were, uh, where they were, um, you know, where, where they had to stop because of the Yalta Conference and the Yalta Agreements, where the American soldiers would stop. And um, while they were marching into Germany, they were coming into a town called Gardelegen, and the Gardelegen massacre occurred as they're marching into town, where the German soldiers uh, put 1,200 people in a huge barn and burned it as the American soldiers were coming in, and the American soldiers came in as all 1,200 people. Uh, perished within the barn and my grandpa my grandpa actually talked about that a little bit he uh you know whenever like uh there was meat on the grill or something like that you know he'd go he'd he go, he said it smell it smells like the jews burning it smells like the jews burning that's what we smelled and uh grandpa he and i don't know if they were jewish or not maybe grandpa he was just an american soldier he wasn't privy to their uh, to that information but he, uh, he would say that and then move on with life and keep going. And uh, so Grandpa was, you know, he, he witnessed D-Day, which is one of the most horrific events any American has ever witnessed in the history of our country. And then he also witnessed the largest war crime any American soldier witnessed, which was the Garda Lagan Massacre. And Grandpa, do you know what he talked about about World War II? I mean, he told some of the good stories and the cool stories and shooting Germans when you pushed, you know, when, when you pushed them. I remember he talked about uh, taking the destroyer ship home and like choppy seas. Everybody had the seasickness, but he didn't. He was in the kitchen. It was so great because he had uh, the kitchen to himself and he had all the food he could eat. and It was so wonderful. He also talked about the, the French women, that um, the French women were very uh, beautiful and accommodating. That, you know, the American soldiers came in, they pushed the Nazis out, and there they were to liberate France from Nazi occupation. And that he said the French women were really great. They were wonderful and they were happy to see us. He didn't give me too many more details than that. But you, you figure if you saw a heavy um, uh, battle, you saw D-Day, you saw the Garda Legion Massacre, and you, you shot a lot of German people, you talk about all the things that like messed your life up and made it difficult. Turns out that Grandpa didn't do that. Grandpa talked about all the positives in World War II which were the French women and all the food he could eat on the destroyer because everybody was seasick. Now, my old man, um, he, uh, he was a cop in the South Bronx. Uh, this was the day before tasers, back in New York in the 70s and 80s, the crack crisis. Um, my, my father's precinct in the South Bronx had half the murders in New York City in it, and he was a street cop. He shot people. He, uh, he arrested people almost every day. Um, he was held, held hostage. Uh, in a grocery store once. He had to give up his gun and have a, a gun to his head for approximately two hours, and eventually he put the guy in the hospital or killed him with um, a can of tomatoes from the, uh, the store shelf. He also had a bounty on his head from the Italian mafioso uh, for stepping up and doing the right thing. And my dad, you ask him, you know, you, you talk about these stories, and, you know, literally it was the day before Taser, so he was fist fighting every single day because every collar, every arrest was literally a fist fight with a nightstick in somebody's mouth and pushing him to the ground and like punching him in the head. Um, but uh, they didn't have a taser to uh, like make the, uh, the perpetrator uh, succumb to them. So they had to do it with violent force. My dad loved his job and he said, you know, it was really great helping people out, that people in the neighborhood were really great. They really appreciated the, the care, you know, the, the police work that I did for them. And it was really great making their neighborhood safer. And uh, it was like really fun really fun to make people happier. So my grandpa, you know, uh, kicking butt in the beaches of Normandy and uh, went, uh, burying bodies for three days after the Garda Lega massacre. And my dad literally fist fighting every day of his life, every day of his life. 
Both of them came out of those experiences. Not saying, oh, woe is me, it's difficult, I'm oppressed, oh, it was horrible. Uh, both saying I had a pretty good existence and this is a wonderful, a wonderful life that God gave me and uh, I appreciate every moment I have on this planet. And my grandpa, may God rest his soul, my dad's still healthy, robust, and alive. But, you know, you look at the kids these days, uh, the Z generation or millennials or whatever it is, they have an ax to grind with everybody. They think they're, they're the oppressed class of people. They think that uh, they have it harder than anybody and that there's, uh, they're oppressed by the patriarchy or like whatever group they want to make, some minority status, some sexual group, this and or that. And um, I actually want to t uh, address these people. You're not oppressed because you didn't, you weren't in Normandy, you weren't, in, you, know, in, you didn't bury bodies for three days in the Cartilagin Massacre, you didn't shoot Germans, and you certainly didn't fist fight with perpetrators in the South Bronx your entire life. Um, what you do is uh, you have a pretty soft life, like a comfortable life. Uh, you get to uh, uh, not work very much because your parents support you, and. Um, you don't have to fight with anybody and you kind of probably uh, spend a lot of time on video games. You don't do a lot of hard labor. And then you complain that about the patriarchy or like sexual oppression or whatever it is. And um, the bottom line is don't, don't do that because that's kind of pathetic because suffering, it's all relative, right? I mean, the ultimate suffering is Christ. Is, um, he, uh, for coming down and witness, being a witness of the truth, he got put to his death as the son of God uh, to save all of mankind. Now, nobody has it that hard, so stop complaining. And, um, and the Catholics say something. They say, offer it up. You know, carry your cross. You, know, you have a cross to bear, and it's yours to bear. Do it. And so you got to stop. You have to stop complaining. You have to stop um, trying to uh, separate people out. And I actually think Generation Z and the Millennials are being manipulated by some larger force out there uh, they're feeding you what oppressive story they want to feed you, and you're picking it up. And so I'm going to encourage all you people out there, every single one of you, um, don't listen to them. Don't uh, feel as if you're oppressed. Feel as if you have good life. I mean, you're not storming the beaches of Normandy, for sure not. And so um, um, forge on with your life, and don't complain, and be happy, and be optimistic, and go into this world and make everybody's life better. Because if you do that, everybody's life will be better. But if you go into this world and you say, oh, woe is me, oh, the patriarchy's got me down, oh, it's uh, this uh, racial class that's got me down, oh, somebody's got me down, like, there's no, there's no end to that complaining. That complaining can go on forever. And the only thing is it divides humans from one another. And so this is Catholic Dad making you think about it. Please like or subscribe. God bless. And stop complaining, everybody, and live a sacramental life. Pray the daily rosary.